Welcome to another episode of the Wood Couture podcast, recording live here in our regional office in Dubai. Today we have the absolute pleasure to welcome to the show the one and only Nina Grounding, co-founder of Curioso, by name and by fact. Welcome to the, to the show. Thank you, Felipe. It's great to be here. Lovely to have you, and uh, we want to dive into, and, uh, I, into your life, because uh, I read some very interesting things about you, and uh, we want to discover oh. it. Yeah, let's see it. But above all, all our viewers, please subscribe, very important, and uh, uh, explore Nina's website, explore the work they do, and uh, really, they are one of a kind. So, and... Uh, human-centric, I should say, for what I've been uh, reading. So, I, I was astonished, background in business, economics, and finance. Wow. Yeah. Why design then? Mm. Um, well, when I was young, I didn't know design was really an option. Um, I, first-generation immigrant from China, I was raised by parents who were doctors and engineers. And so um, growing up, I thought that the path was really in the sciences or perhaps I could become a lawyer, but that didn't seem very appealing to me. Um, so really, I just I didn't discover design until much later in life. So I went to school. I studied finance. I studied economics. Um, I came out of school and thought, you know, I would go to Wall Street and uh take the investment banking path. I ended up not quite doing that, but still worked in finance for a number of years. And then um, I found that that work was not very fulfilling. I was spending a lot of time in spreadsheets, making PowerPoint presentations for investment bankers, broker dealers, hedge funds, pension funds. And it just, it wasn't giving me the a lot of job satisfaction. So I actually ended up doing that by day. And then at night, I would hang out with my friends who were uh, architects. And um, I found what they were doing so much more engaging and interesting. And I started thinking about what is the outcome or what is the product of the work that someone does in life? And they were creating spaces and buildings and places for people to be. And I was creating PowerPoint decks. So I really thought, I think design might be something that I'm interested in. And so it was really through that moving to the city of Chicago, which is just so strong from an architecture standpoint, the history of all of the buildings and the architects who have come through that city, the incredible sensibility to master planning and city planning as a way of making a city really serve its people. Um, and then I also, at that same time, when I went to design school, discovered hospitality. And so the merging of those things together led me to where I am today. Rome, Istanbul, and Marrakesh, three of your favorite destinations. Why? Mm -hmm. Rome, for sure. Um, I actually, I, I believe, <laughs> silly, but also like kind of true, that I was probably a Roman in a former life. Um, and I don't, something about the history and the way that civilization forms. And um, I love Rome in that it is a incredibly modern city, but you walk around and you stumble on ruins, literally just walking down the street. Um, this layering of history and art and culture and fashion and, you know, the way that people live and the in, way to enjoy life and the public spaces, right? Like, Trevi Fountain and the public plazas and the Spanish steps, like all of those areas that allow people to gather in a way that is natural, free. So it's very democratic. Um, and it just, it feels vibrant in a way that I don't think can be manufactured. And so um, roaming around streets of Rome and Istanbul and, play, and cities that just feel that they, you know, they just, they have a soul to them and a rhythm to them that is ancient, um, really speaks to me. It's interesting that um, uh, reading a lot of your interviews, you speak often about that your favorite 
hotels or hotel chains is Amman on one side, and then you do reference that there are some ve some individual hotels like the Astra Hotel in Santorini, which is do things right. Why is that? What is so special about these places? Uh, I think what's special about whether it's a hotel brand like Amman or an individual ind independent property um, is they really they understand hospitality to its truest core of the sense, and that's service. Um, it is anticipating the needs of your guests, right? It is anticipating what um, you might, it's just having that intuition, right? Like you might be coming in late from a flight and a good host knows that it's two o'clock in the morning. You just want your key. You want to get to your room. You don't need a full 10 minute tour of the property. Um, that that gut instinct or it's it's something that can't be taught, but that is truly what hospitality is about. It's not really how the space looks or um, and this is me coming saying this as a designer. Right. But it's, it's really about um, bringing that human element and that empathy and service to say, you know what, don't worry about anything. I've got I've got you. I'm going to take care of this. Um, and so I think there's great brands and great properties that get it. And it, and really that comes down to the people, the individuals who understand what a guest is looking for and they can deliver it really seamlessly and um, authentically without, uh, without making it feel forced. In all your literature online for Curioso or even when you guys talk about yourself, you're very keen in highlighting the fact that you are committed to design meaningful experiences. So tell me a bit more, what does it take to design meaningful experiences? Yeah, um, human psychology, honestly. I think if, and I had studied some psychology in college, actually I minored in psychology. Um, and I'm really glad because the more that I learned about the design, the more I realized that it was, it's not so much about how something looks. It's really about how something makes you, a place makes you feel, right? That's feeling is really tied directly to memory. It's tied to um, whether or not something lasts within you as an experience. And so um, design is really meant to evoke emotion, or good design, right, is meant to evoke emotion. And if you can make someone feel a certain way, then they will return. They will come back. Like I think if you think about some of your favorite places um, you've ever been, maybe, I don't know. I wonder if it would be based on how it looked or maybe more based on how you felt when you were there. Perhaps you had the most fun you've ever had. Perhaps it took your breath away. Perhaps it um, allowed you to have the best conversation with whomever you were with. Um, you know, maybe the lighting was just right that you felt like you could completely relax, right? Like that's what good design is meant to do. It's really about how somebody feels within a space, how they feel about themselves, how they're able to connect with those around them. Um, then it is about, you know, the finish of the floor or the color of the wall. Um, all of those things impact that, of course. But if you design with the final goal or outcome of making someone feel a space, I think that you'll have so much more impact on both their life, uh, the people who work there, and then ultimately the bottom line for the business, right? Because if you make someone feel great, they're going to come back time and time and time again. One of the biggest dilemma that I am genuinely investigating is the following. Should design address the target audience or should design be able to deliver the message of the brand promise? Mm. Is it possible for it to do both? I mean, uh, um, yeah. That yeah. is the question. <laughs> Right. Well, I think great brands understand who their target audience is and those things are aligned. Right. I think sometimes um, brands are challenged or maybe start to lack uh, real appeal and stickiness if they try to be for everyone. Um, 
when a brand really understands what their mission is or what or why they exist um, or who they want to have a direct link and communication and speak to, then they have a specific point of view and they really resonate with that target audience, right? So I think the challenge of this dissonance between um, catering to your guest and being true to yourself should not be dissonant. Those things should be aligned. And, um, you know, if you are a brand who really understands who you are, who understands your point of view, who understands your guest, you're going to naturally be designed and um, speak to that guest. So I think a lot of times, maybe people focus too much on capturing uh, more of the market or um, trying to make sure that they, you know, resonate with everyone under the sun. And that's, it's, it's an okay goal, but I think what maybe that means is you're not going to be super sticky to anyone. Now, when you guys created Curioso, um, have you have you had in mind that design style, or what, what was your your core values when when you started the company with your partner? Um, collaboration. Uh, that was why uh, my partner Dan Pierce and I started the company. We wanted to work with a great team. We wanted to work with great owners. We wanted to work with great brands on projects that were meaningful to them. And so when we started, it was truly with the desire to work with other humans and to create something meaningful. Um, and it was and and to pursue design excellence. And so there is no style. You'll see that when you look across our portfolio. We have a wide range of uh, design aesthetics, but those are all evolved from the collaboration of the teams. Um, none of the projects are curioso projects, right? Like these are all projects that are uh, hotels, restaurants, um, bars, spas, wellness spaces for our clients, um, residences, they're for our clients. And so, and they're also in all different places all over the US in um, Mexico and in Latin America. And so when we do these projects, they are informed by the place, the architecture, the community that is there, the hopes and dreams of our clients. And what we do is we really synthesize all of that, um, bring it together, and we help them to cast a vision of what this is. Um, so every project is different and it should be because no two projects are exactly alike in you know, their location or their project teams or the buildings that they reside in. In the history of Curioso, Although I'm sure that all your projects are unique, you know, I mean, because they're all different. Is that a project that touches you, that is, is special to you in somehow? <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. They're, they, they're all kind of special in some way. Um, I think, what, and I'll just speak for myself. I can't speak for my whole company or team um, on this, but... One project that really does touch me is a project that helped me understand the true impact of a great hospitality space within a community. Um, it was actually one of our earliest hotel projects when um, our company was basically just Dan and I. Uh, we designed a hotel, boutique hotel in downtown El Paso. Um, at the time, El Paso was very... Um, underdeveloped or it, it had been it was needed to re, uh, undergo a revitalization downtown was very quiet lots of empty storefronts um essentially no one in the streets on like a tuesday at 2 p.m and our client had a vision of bringing a boutique hotel into downtown and when we started that project, we were excited. You know, we were pretty new, uh, having formed our company just about a year before, prior. And um, we were excited to get our hands on into um, a full hotel project. And it was over the course of designing that project, meeting the community, and then really once the hotel opened, coming back 
seeing the pride that people felt who worked there and said, gosh, I've lived in El Paso my whole life. We've never had a place like this. Um, this is down to the person behind the front desk, the general manager, but or this like I cannot forget this woman, Tammy, who she kept that lobby so spotless. Like every single day she was wiping and cleaning and mopping. And I would always say every time we'd go back, I say, Tammy, like I can't believe how incredible the space looks. It's immaculate. And she said, I'm just so proud. Like I want to make sure our guests have the most amazing stay when they come here because this is such an incredible place for our city. So that really became an anchor. And over the years, as we've returned, we've seen restaurants and coffee shops and boutiques and other hotels really starting to open and um, create community. Now there's residential there where there was once wasn't before. So downtown El Paso, having gone from a pretty quiet place when we first started, and I can't say that our project you know, single-handedly revitalized downtown, but it definitely played a role. Um, it became a place where people love to go to happy hour after work. Previously, people would come downtown, go to their nine to five jobs and get the hell out of downtown because there was nothing else to do. Um, Beto O'Rourke, who is from El Paso, um, he used to love or still loves to hold his town halls at that hotel. Um, so a hotel being the heart of community and being something that is way more than just, you know, heads and beds. That was that was the first project where I really saw, felt, and understood that. And um, that's what makes the work so meaningful now is that we approach all of our projects knowing that and with that in mind. In terms of gender equality, inclusion, and diversity, do you feel the design industry in general is doing enough to address these issues? Hmm. That is a great question. Um, is the design industry doing enough? Well, I think one of the beautiful things about design is that we are inherently very diverse um, in gender and in um, background. But hospitality as a whole um, could do better from a diversity standpoint. Um, well, I'll start with our company, right? Like we also founded our company knowing that we wanted to build a diverse collective, but diversity did not just mean the color of someone's skin or their gender or their sexual orientation. It really meant for us their background and their experience. And so we wanted to build a team of people from all sorts of different backgrounds. I mean, I'm a finance economy major, who became a designer. Uh, my partner has an architectural background, but on our team, we have people with textile background, fashion background. We have a geneticist. Um, we have music. Uh, we have people who had an opera music background, um, literature. And all of that brings a perspective that couldn't happen if everyone were the same. And so we really see diversity as a strength to making our team better. Mm -hmm. And we built our team based on that. So I, I don't have exactly the stats on the top of my head, but I think our company is like 70% women and like uh, probably close to 80% uh, minority, meaning, you know, and it, we're just, we're, we're, we know that that's a strength for the makeup of our team. Now, I'm also I'm an uh, executive board member of the Hospi um, Hospitality Diversity Action Council, which was founded by um, Stacey Shoemaker during the pandemic after the George Floyd um, riots. And, and really, it was about looking at our industry as a whole and saying, OK, there's a lot of diversity in hospitality, but most of that diversity is at the service level, is at the property level. As you get up into ownership, um, development, um, brand, as you get up into equity, it looks less and less diverse. And so um, this council is really created to try to bring more diversity into the upper levels of um the hospitality industry and to do that from within, right? Because you have an incredible base of diversity 
working in your hotels? How do we bring those people who already deliver hospitality, who already understand it, who already love it, breathe it, um, and bring that up into upper levels of ownership and management? And so, um, yeah, we can absolutely do better. Uh, and we need to. Absolutely. Now, in the last 61 episodes of our podcast, talking to your colleagues all over the world, and um, I was shocked to learn that despite the, the last three years' events, uh, the interior design community, in their briefs from clients, they don't get enough clarity on how much clients want to address the issue of um, sustainability. And, uh, and uh, you know, sometimes very silent, sometimes very tacit, and sometimes they don't talk at all about that. So how has been your experience in your journey with Curioso and sustainability and clients? Yeah. I think sustainability, it's a tough topic for clients because I think when they think about it, they think it's going to cost more mm -hmm. um, because so much of sustainability, the conversation has been about products and, you know, FSC certified wood and coming regionally and, you know, being able to uh, recycle the product. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of great work that's been done in that space. But it oftentimes our clients feel like, gosh, it just means it, it's going to cost me more money. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. And I think maybe what we need to do is um, broaden the the thinking or the terminology and um, sustainability for us as a company oftentimes is more about timelessness. It's about preservation of what already exists. It's about maybe not ripping out all of the beautiful flora that's been there for 40 years and put coming in with something new, but really celebrating what already exists and, um, putting less into the landmines and having, and, and so a lot of that, a lot of um, that type of mindset, does it actually check a necessarily like sustainability box of, does it come within, you know, 50 miles or a 500 miles? Does it, um, you know, have any certifications? No, but at the end of the day, we think it's better for the planet um, and better for people. And actually a lot of times, um, Timeless design, it it is one of those things that maybe speaks to more people, but in a way that is resonant, right? Like this is this is maybe like tied back to our the earlier in our conversation when we talked about like why places like Rome and Istanbul just feel so rich. And it's because they have that history, that layering, right? And so with design, we try to do that as well. And we think that that's really quite a sustainable mindset um, is to work with what is existing, add on to what is there rather than clear it all out, start with a blank slate and um, you know make everything new. I always say to people in Rome, there are people that live in houses built 800 years ago. So uh -huh. no, need for, no need for recycling, that's very sustainable. Right, exactly. So yeah. if you do it right, yeah, it may cost you, but it's long lasting. And uh, but um, um, I want to ask you, um, since you are very good with forecast, you know, you have a very solid background in finance. What do you want? Oh, to, what do you see Curioso in five years time? What do you think mm -hmm. you want to accomplish as an organization in the next five years? Yeah. Um... One of the things that we talk about a lot is really helping people to understand what design is. Uh, it's not solely aesthetic, right? It is it is problem solving at the most basic levels. And true curiosity and creativity comes from being able to ask the right questions and understand what is the true 
problem here that we are trying to solve for. And problem doesn't always necessarily mean a bad thing, right? But um, designing for servers and bartenders and hosts and front desk staff to be able to be their best, to be able to shine, to be able to deliver incredible hospitality, um, that is something that we strive for. Designing for community to come in and for neighbors to connect with each other, for there to be spaces where people want to be. And it's not necessarily the hotel guests, but it is those who live in the neighborhood. Like that is something that design has the ability to do. And so what we as a company are really striving to um, help people understand is the, the true impact and power of design thinking. And that design is for people. It's for people, it's to build community, it's to bring people together. It's to make people feel the best that they can feel of themselves. And so much of that is about helping them to connect to their place and helping them to connect to others. Um, and design is a vehicle for that. So where we see Curioso is that we work with people who, we continue to work with people who understand that we continue to push the boundaries of hospitality and are able to design spaces that really resonate. Um, and then where that takes us, you know, I'm not really sure. We don't have like, a, we wanna be a hundred strong. We wanna be across five continents. Like that's, those aren't our goals. Our goals are to continue to push ourselves and to push our clients and our projects to, to just pursue design excellence and see what see where that can possibly take us. Um, it's been a really fun journey thus far, and we've learned a lot about the impact of design. We've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work. Um, you know, we just, my partner and I were talking with our team yesterday and we were like, gosh, we fail more than we succeed, um, every single day with ideas and thoughts. And, um, but it's really, it's it's through that discovery and through that curiosity and the questioning of like, how do we do this better? Like, that's where that's where we want to be and that's where we want to keep going. Right. The day you're going to, let's say, abandon your uh, commercial activities because it is time for you to concentrate on different things. How would you like to be remembered? How would I like to be remembered? Oh, gosh, this is a tough question. Um, See? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to be remembered as, you know, someone who pursued a lot of um, big ideas, someone who um, hopefully was inspiring to um, the next generation of designers or design thinkers who really want to use the power of design to help make people's lives better. Um, and then what I want to do is I, you know, spend time with my family and, um, in nature. <laughs> right. Yeah. So final question, if I put a massive, gigantic white canvas on the top of the tallest building in Chicago, what message would you write? On that? Oh, Chicago is the best city in the United States, hands down. I will absolutely um, stand behind that. And I think we actually, um, we have a new marketing campaign in Chicago and it's it's when you go, you know, and it is absolutely true. I think so many people have a preconceived notion of Chicago because we do have a pretty tough narrative and story out there about our city. And, but when you come, people are always so incredibly surprised by what a, wonderful city it is how it is so activated how people are so nice the city is so clean it has so much to offer our food is some of the best I think um in terms of just variety and quality um the way that the river and the lake really truly are part of the city like you can engage with it and um spend time every single day and it is um gosh i i could go on forever about chicago but it is really it's the best city so when you go you know <laughs>